News 46 is brought to you by... Southwest Medical Associates. Look for news about their latest healthcare center opening soon in your neighborhood. Southwest Medical Associates, now that's powerful medicine. News 46 is also brought to you by Red Apple Fireworks. You've never seen anything like it. Nevada's elite fireworks shopping experience, Red Apple Fireworks. News 46 is also brought to you by Markham Title Company, your local escrow company for the last 23 years. Tonight on News 46, a single vehicle rollover this afternoon on Highway 372. And a recall effort is underway for the Nye County Tax Assessor. And is the economy bouncing back? News 46 starts now. You're watching KPVM News 46. With Rick Vale and Rhonda Van Winkle. Local coverage from Deanna O'Donnell and News Across Nevada with Janet Eric. News 46, local coverage you can count on. Good evening, it's Wednesday, July 6, 2011. I'm Rick Vale. And I'm Rhonda Van Winkle for News 46. Topping our news tonight, it appears that the female driver of a single vehicle rollover this afternoon may possibly have been under the influence of alcohol when her SUV overturned into a ditch off of Highway 372. Yes, we were dispatched for a one vehicle rollover with injuries. Upon arrival, we did find an SUV that was resting on all four wheels. It was one patient that was found to be entrapped in the vehicle. Rescue company rolled in. Did a quick extrication with via a driver's side door pop. The patient was successfully removed in a timely fashion. Is now being prepared for transport. She was not uh, physically entrapped, just mechanically? Uh, mechanically entrapped. Uh, she was unable to get the driver's side door open due to the damage as a result of the rollover. You didn't need to stabilize the vehicle anyway? No, this was a rapid extrication due to the fact that there's some imminent weather moving in on us and we wanted to make sure we got the patient out safely removed to a vehicle. And then there was no other occupants? There was no other occupants in the vehicle and also was found to be in a stable position. Yes, uh, we've had a single vehicle roll, roll, rollover, single occupant, uh, occupant uh, f uh, female adult being transported to hospital to, to be checked out. Uh, we've got possible alcohol involved. Uh, we are going to have to do a uh, evidentiary blood draw on this driver. Uh, it doesn't appear to be anything serious and then we'll just have to get it all cleaned up. So do you know if it's an overcorrection or possible drunk driving? Uh, looking at the scene, it looks like it got involved into an overcorrection situation. But again, it looks like we may have alcohol involved and I would have to say it's probably uh, based upon the fact they've had a little too much to drink. You were checking the purse too as well. Uh, we were looking for ID when we were in the purse, to be honest. That's all we were looking for. We finally found an out-of-state driver's license. So two of the containers look recently consumed? Well, we can only speculate on that. They, the fact that the seal's broken and that uh, it's missing part of the contents uh, constitutes an open uh, container violation under Nevada State uh, Revised Statute. Did you smell any alcohol inside the vehicle? Uh, yeah, the, a faint odor of it. The papers were filed this morning and the movement is underway to attempt to recall Nye County Tax Assessor Shirley Matson. This morning at the Ian Deutsch Government Complex, the official papers were filed here against Nye County Tax Assessor Shirley Madsen to file a petition to ask for her recall. We are going to speak to positive perumps Stephanie Lopez. I filed our recall against Shirley Madsen. So, so we have a couple of people who joined you here and that we had to wait for this date, didn't we? We did. We had to wait the six months um, so she served in time. And so today we actually could have filed yesterday. We just assumed if we just waited one more day just to be certain we were yeah, and there's a few people here supporting us. <laughs> and we got a petition, the beginning of the petition, right? Yes, we have all copies made. Um, we have a total of about 4,000 copies made right now. Um, there's a few of us that are going to go out today to get signatures um, tomorrow and Friday, and then we're going to do our kickoff event at Romero's on Saturday. And so everybody's invited to this kickoff. Absolutely. The more the merrier. What time is that? Two to six. And that's to kind of organize, too, as well, or get people going to get this petition signed. How many signatures do you need? We need about 3,700. Our goal is 6,000 signatures. 
And then, what's uh, have you heard anything from Shirley Manson? What's her what's her response to this petition? Actually, um, I believe Nancy Lord sent me a courtesy letter in my mail um, about a week ago about slander and libel and defamation. Um, I responded and haven't heard a, a word since. So. What was your response? Basically, that we have the same rights and that it was a courtesy for her to tell me to nicely to shut my mouth and I responded nicely to shut hers. So, <laughs> being honest. <laughs> You have a very active website. People can find out what's going on all the time. Not just with this, but just about Pahrump in general, different issues. That is correct. We have almost now 3,800 um, Nye County residents. We tried. I mean, I'm sure there's people from Vegas or all around, but um, it's a good page. I mean, we get to debate, um, discuss events, and you know, be involved with each other and make our community as positive as possible. And that's where this group kind of came from and it's kind of uh that's the ground of this whole positive perump and people were kind of um, affected by what happened with Shirley Matson. Absolutely. I think that, you know, in my opinion only, our community has a lot of negative um you know, people look at us that we're meth labs or this, that, and the other, and this was the icing on our cake. And we have such a good community and good people in our community that positive prompt people just show you. I mean, that there's a lot of people down there that want to see growth and um, positive change and all of us to stand together. Um, with the Shirley Manson thing, people were outraged. You know, they're upset. I mean, she personally attacked a lot of people by making her comments. And then just to stand behind them, if she had apologized, we wouldn't be here today. And so how can people get involved in this? They could contact me on Positive Prump um, by Facebook, just in the search bar, hit Positive Prump, or they could call me at home at 775-727-8229. Once again, Positive Prump is out there getting those signatures on that petition to ask for Shirley Madsen's recall of her position as Nye County Tax Assessor. And, of course, this Saturday at 2 o'clock will be that kickoff party at Romero's. This is Deanne O'Donnell at the Ian Deutsch Government Complex for News 46. Well, Secretary of State Ross Miller's office has issued the certified candidates list for the U.S. House of Representatives District 2 seat. This is the congressional seat that was vacated by Congressman Dean Heller, who took Senator Johnson, I'm sorry, Senator Ensign's position after the resign, after he resigned from office. The candidates that will appear on the September 13th special election ballot will be Republican Mark Amity. Independent American Timothy Fasano, Independent Helmuth Lehman, and Democrat and Nevada State Treasurer Kate Marshall. And folks, on the town board agenda was the discussion and possible decision to require backup for all action items brought before the town board. Why you have backup material out in advance of the meeting is that we as the public also have an opportunity to kind of get some understanding about it, do some research. but. I also understand the concern that to put it on each and every item that's on the agenda is, is sometimes not necessary. And what I would like as a consideration would be what if the requirement were attached to items that have a fiscal impact. The backup tells everyone what the intent was of this item. So when you're not there two years from now, four years from now, and something needs to be amended, we can look back at what the whole intent was of putting this forward instead of trying to guess what it was there for to determine, because we're in 2011 now and stuff we did in 2007 doesn't make sense anymore because we don't live in 2007. So we have to look at our budgets, look at everything and go back. And if we know the intent of what that was and if it was something that was very budgetary and needed a lot of backup to it to explain exactly why we were doing what we were doing, then great. If it was something that was simple and all you want to do is put down two sentences, it shouldn't be too hard to put two sentences down. And you should accept two sentences if that's all somebody says that they want. And, and one other thing, Mr. Culkin, I take a huge offense to you not wanting to listen to people speak. If you're going to say that you come here, already have your mind made up, think that all of us are here to, you know, bamboos, you know, yell at you, you know, we voted you in. That's all we did. We didn't say that every single thing, you know, you know exactly what to do from the day you were in there. You have to listen to us, you know, whether you like it or not. You sat here in front of this microphone for years. And do you think it sometime, you know, all these people should have said, well, Harley, I don't want to listen to you. 
I'm smart. You voted me and I'm smart. I, I said I come prepared to make a decision and I listen and then I make my vote. That's what I said. I didn't say I don't listen to you. I, you what said I said you was, I don't like to, excuse me, I said I don't like to be bullied. I will not be micromanaged. I will use my education, experience, and knowledge to make decisions. I will listen to you if you have more to add to that. But as I also said, some people just are on the opposite side simply because they don't like you. And I'm not going to sit here and be badgered by people. I will make my decisions, and that's the way it is. If you have a question beforehand, I would appreciate anybody asking me what I think about a subject. Because I, I Wow. <laughs> Indeed. Folks, coming up, is the economy on the rise? And we'll find out what's new in the entertainment world. We'll have all this and more right after the break, so please keep it here. Welcome back to News 46. A press release has been issued regarding two wildfires that are currently active on the western portion of the Nevada National Security Site. A total of 2,000 plus acres have burned. All personnel have been accounted for. Nevada National Security Site Fire and Rescue are responding with assistance from Bureau of Land Management. No infrastructure has been impacted. The fires are located in a remote area of the 1,360 square mile site. Access to the roads in Area 25, the southwestern portion of the site, are restricted. All right, well, with so many new businesses opening in Pahrump, is this a sign that the local economy could be bouncing back? I mean, we are still, in my opinion, in a recession. We've never left a recession. There's talk about a double dip, a double bounce. Well, we, well, we haven't bounced out of the first one yet. But, you know, yet still people are looking to come here and relocate. And that recession is in all over the country. And I get people from all over the country looking to come here. I'm entertaining a company now from Canada. I'm entertaining another company from France that's looking at. Here just recently, we we just got a company to make a commitment. They've escrowed property to build a 50,000 square foot manufacturing plant here. It's not a done deal. It's never a done deal to the last day, but it's moving forward. It's an advancing at a good pace, and I'm excited about those things. How do you sell Pahrump? I, I tell them, look around. Yeah. You, you, know, you know, Pahrump is not a really hard sale. Because, because people come and they look around, they look at the mountains, they look at the wide open spaces, they look at the opportunity to buy land at a reasonable price, and they look at a small community. Mm -hmm. and, and, and then they want to come. And then you sell them the dream, mm -hmm. you, know? You, don't, you know? You know, people bought 250,000 quarter inch drills mm -hmm. last year, drill bits, mm -hmm. but that's not what they wanted, a drill bit. What they wanted was a quarter inch hole. Uh -huh. You see, so what we do is we sell the sizzle you know what I mean? And then they come and buy the steak. So I know that we have Denny's coming in. We have uh, over where Grease Monkey used to be. What is that going to be? That's going to be a tire store. And, and that's just exciting that they've decided to come here and, and, our, and, and revitalize that property. Not that it looked bad to begin with, but they're coming in there and then the Denny's is coming in. And that's great, that diversification, that opportunity in our community is good. But that's not really what I focus on that yeah. much. I know that we got Radio Shack and we have Red Apple Fireworks just came in, but we're looking possibly of having some manufacturing in here so that people can work here as well as live here. Absolutely, Deanna. What, what I try to focus on is, is that all of them are important, and I give them all the same amount of time. But just like myself and everyone else, you only have limited resources. And I try to focus my resources on the greatest bang for the buck, so to speak, since you mentioned fireworks. And that's the recent wind sail receptor coming here, which was an 18, almost an 18-month courting process. And it's still going to be probably another six months before they get up and going. They're projecting to have 89 jobs by the end of the year and 230 during full uh, build-out. We have about three other the manufacturers that's looking to come here. That's gonna, they're going to build wind sails that and uh, that's going to provide jobs here and it's exactly what we're looking for. Well they're going to provide more than that. Uh, I, I spent four and a half hours just yesterday with Richard uh, Sinke. Uh, the, he's the, uh, the CEO of the company. He just got back from about three weeks in China and he updated me about what's going on and the generators and there's some new technology. But what he's also willing to do is do the training for the installation, the, the, not just the installation, which he's now looking at a third company out of uh, Scottsdale, Arizona, but possibly the maintenance of all the, the wind sails, which they go ahead and manufacture. And I'm trying to convince, and, and then I visited with another company yesterday in Vegas, and, and this is so exciting, it, it's, it's a storage, it's an energy power storage 
company. Mm -hmm. And they found ways to you take renewable energy and store it. Yeah. I mean, this will be, again, uh, technology breaking through, breakthrough technology mm -hmm. that may we may be able to have them come here and, and get started, which is exciting. There's another small company. I'm, I, I'm not at liberty to mention the name. Gentleman's name's from Richard. Worked with him for about 15 months now. Okay, if you're listening, Richard, I'm talking about you. And what he does is he makes electronic components. He bought property. He closed on it. He's, he, he's coming back. He's taking the summer off. Okay. And, and then they're doing about $2.5 $2. million. It's been a family operation primarily. Okay. Uh, they bought a nice piece of land where they're going to set up and they work out of their home in California. And they've come to Pahrump and they make these electronic components for the Department of Defense and everything else where eventually then he'll go ahead and, and possibly build even a bigger facility when he needs to hire people on. So there's a lot of movies in the park began this weekend at Petrick Park with Independence Day. We spoke to Nick Moore about the next seven weeks of movies that will show at Ian Deutsch Memorial Park free to the public. Movies in the Park 2011. It's a great series. We do uh, Park and Recreation sponsors it or the Town of Pahrump sponsors it. Park and Re Recreation Board. We go to work and you know put it on for you guys but um, Great series, we get a great turnout every year and we're lucky enough to get it back in our town this year again. This is something that people really fought to have happen. It's something that's really important to us. Even in these economic hard times, it's something that we can enjoy that's free. Absolutely, and in these tough times, there's a lot of families that this might be the only opportunity they get to go see a movie or anything. Or We don't have a movie theater here in Pahrump, but you know, it's you know, inexpensive to go over the hill you know, to take the whole family. and quite the ordeal, but it's nice to be able to do that in our own local park on a big screen, you know, make a family night out of it. So it's great to have it. It's really true. Um, these are wonderful events and they happen every Saturday. I think it's at dusk. This past Saturday that we showed Independence Day. We did. We had Independence Day. We had a great turnout, five, six hundred people easy. Um, just like we always do. We always, you know, have a really good turnout. So it's, it's a good representation that the town loves it, the people love it. And it's a it's a it's a great event that you know we should try to keep continuing to do here, uh, especially in these tough times. And we'll keep everybody posted of the lineup that's coming up, but it's going to be in once again this Saturday and for the next five Saturdays, right? Uh, there's there's eight total eight total dates actually. Uh, the first one was this weekend, uh, the second the next one's uh, on the ninth, and it's at dusk and it's correct at Ian Deutsch Memorial, and we really extended it this year. Last year we only had four and we really took some heat. For, for just having it, uh, having the four. So we really try to extend it through the whole summer and hopefully everybody comes out and enjoys it. Now let's see what's happening in the world of entertainment with Zach Fuentes. I'm Zach Fuentes with your entertainment this week. The non-guilty verdict that acquitted Casey Anthony of the death of her two-year-old daughter Kaylee has sparked outrage across the nation following yesterday's verdict in a Florida courtroom. The trial, which has arguably held the largest audience since the O.J. Simpson trial, has resulted in CNN headline news getting its highest ratings in 29 years. Many will be watching tomorrow when 25-year-old Anthony receives her sentencing for the guilty verdict she received in regards to providing false information to an officer. She has spent three years in jail since she was charged with her daughter's murder. The expected sentence time is four years. The annual list of highest paid actresses in Hollywood has been announced. Angelina Jolie and Sarah Jessica Parker. The two tied for top earning actress. Both earned $30 million during the time period which ran from May 2010 to May 2011, according to the annual ranking compiled by Forbes magazine. Julia Roberts came in on their heels at $20 million, followed by Kristen Stewart of the Twilight Saga at the same rate. The latest Pirates of the Caribbean blockbuster has crossed the billion dollar mark at the global box office. According to Disney, this is only the eighth movie in history to do so. They also added that Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides has shown us just how strongly the story and these characters resonate with people the world over. In total, the four Pirates of the Caribbean movies have earned a combined $3.68 billion in global box office. Woody Allen is in Rome to shoot his upcoming movie, The Bob to Cameron, which will also star Penelope Cruz, Ellen Page, and others. Allen met with Rome Mayor Gianni Alemano, who presented him with the statue of the symbol of Rome, the She-Wolf. The Bob to Cameron begins filming this Monday. The Royals are on their way to Los Angeles. 
This is Kate's first time in America and William's first time in Hollywood. The Duke and Duchess of Cambridge will arrive at LAX International Airport at 6.30 p.m. on Friday and will be greeted by the British ambassador. Saturday at 6.30 in the evening, the couple will mix and mingle with British talent at the British Academy of Film and Television Arts, in which Prince William is the president. The red carpet event is called Brits to Watch 2011 at the Belasco Theater in Los Angeles. The black tie event is in honor of British talent emerging in the television and film industries. I'm Zach Fuentes, and that was your entertainment this week. And now for our Facebook question of the day. Today's question is, with the Casey Anthony case now completed, what is your opinion of the United States justice system? Do you think it needs reform? Here's what some of you had to say. Tammy says, reform? The DA didn't prove any of the timeline to prove proof of guilt. He spent too much time feeding his ego. And Barb says, you do not have to like the outcome, yet the system worked. No 100% proof that there was no one guilty. No DNA was there. Billy says, had nothing, just admit it, all guessing, no proof. Thank heavens you can't be sent to death just because a lot of people think you did it. Got to have proof. No proof? Move on. Spencer says, I think this case supports the justice system. Responsibility lies on both sides to present their case. The burden is on the prosecution, and in this case, they simply didn't do their job. And Michelle says, yes, it's a shame. Well, the district attorney gave kudos to the defense attorney. He actually said he did a really good job. Well, it remains to be seen. Lots yeah. of opinions out there. There are. You know, Casey Anthony's prior fiancé, mm -hmm. he really thinks she did it. <laughs> he really does. I mean, he said so on the Today Show. As do a lot of people here in Pahrump, even. <laughs> well, folks, we've had some rain today. We got some rain planned for tomorrow and maybe even some for the day after that. Don't go anywhere. We'll have your seven-day forecast right after the break. News 46 weather is brought to you by your local dairy farmers. Dairy products are very important in maintaining a healthy body. For more information, you can visit their website at nevadadairycouncil.org. Hey everyone, welcome back to News 46. I'm Rick Vale with your weather. Take a look right here. A flash flood watch is going to remain in effect through tonight at about 10 p.m. We'll have well above normal moisture values in place within the watch area. And slow moving storms could leave up to two inches of rainfall. So again, if you see a large puddle covering a body of road, do not drive through it. We don't want to see anybody have any problems like that. Looking at today, we had a high of 101 degrees, 40% chance of rain out there. Winds out of the south southwest up to about 13 miles per hour. But as my understanding is we've seen gusts even higher than that. Pressure holding steady on the barometer 29.97. The UV index 8, very high for today. Sunrise, 5.33 a.m., and our record high was 115 degrees back in 2007. Now, looking at tonight, going to have 40% chance of rain yet again, a low of 82. Winds out of the southwest at about 16 miles per hour. Sunset will be at 8.05 p.m., and our record low, 63 degrees in 1939. Tomorrow, we got a 40% chance of rain yet again, a high of 104, a low of 82. Winds out of the south-southwest at about 9 miles per hour, but we're going to see gusts upwards of 24 miles per hour. Our UV index for tomorrow is expected to be 9, again very high, and sunrise will be at 5.33 a.m. Moving on to our 7-day forecast. Friday, 20% chance of rain expected out there. Gusts up to 27 miles per hour, a high of 103, a low of 82. Saturday, the weekend, about a 10% chance of rain. The only reason I really put it up there is to really bring in the effect that we are getting rain pretty much the rest of the week here and partway through the weekend. High of 98, a low of 79. Sunday, Looking at 29 mile per hour gusts, a high of 102, a low of 77. Monday, 31 mile per hour gusts, starting the week off strong, 101 for the high, 75 for the overnight low. Tuesday, 35 mile per hour gusts, 100 degrees for the high, 75 for the overnight low. And finishing off our 7 day forecast with 26 mile per hour gusts is Wednesday with 103 for the high and 73 for the overnight low. And our worst weather in the nation today is the very sad Blue Mound, Kansas for strong thunderstorms. Okay, and during the month of July 2011, if you donate $75 to Symphony Animal Foundation, you'll receive a complimentary pet and family portrait session. Call 702-568-0500 to reserve your complimentary session and let them know you want to make your donation to Symphony Animal Foundation. And folks, that's going to do it for this edition of News 46. I'm Rick Vale. And I'm Rhonda Van Winkle. And from everyone up here on the Hill at KPVM, we wish you a safe evening, and we'll see you here again tomorrow night. Until then, good night, Rob. Good night.